Alright, uh, we are back. Uh, ends up, maybe it's just gonna be an hour. But. It's 10.54, December 31st. 2018. 10.54 p.m. It's right, it means that over here on the East Coast, we got an hour left. Four years over. And a new year begins. I'm gonna be talking. I'm gonna be playing some music that I've made this year. But, uh, you know. What will I be doing most of all? I don't know what I'll be doing most of all. Guess I'll just be here.
2018 into 2019. This is it. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the last hour. It's 11.05. We got 45 minutes. We got 45 minutes left until it's until it's New Year's. Do the recording capabilities with I may not be there right at the midnight hour. But this is going out live. You're going to listen to it uh, later on anyway, so it doesn't matter. But just understand that I will be here at midnight when clock goes from 18 to 19. So I usually do an album, but I thought, I'm going to play stuff I made in 18, music I made in 18, talk about stuff I did in 18. Then when the clock strikes, you know, 12, and it's suddenly 2019, that magical, mystical process... Once that occurs, music, it'll be the first music of 2019. But for now, it's, I was I was originally thinking about debuting music. Like, I'm going to debut music 
for 20, you know, 19 or whatever. Uh, but based off what I'm just telling you now, the cooler thing to do is to fucking play music that I recorded in the year that we're just t- talking about. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm watching a uh, playthrough of Streets of Rage, by the way. I'm going to vape a little bit. There's so much I could say about tw- 2018, but two things I will say is that, you know, we got some dispensaries here in Massachusetts. So legal marijuana, smoking that, it's fucking great. It's great. Smoking oil vape pens and playing fucking mods of all the great video games I grew up on. None of which I'm very good at, but you know what? It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. But I was thinking, t- two of the biggest ones were Altered Beast and uh, Streets of Rage, man. Soundtracks to Castlevania. But Se- Sega and NES. You know, Sega Genesis, not Sega Master, but Sega Genesis and NES 8-bit. Those are the two systems, man. In my opinion. There's some more music. Coming right at you.
That was some more music that you heard. Might have ended a little bit early, but we were <laughs> exercising uh, the idea of like John Cage with with silence. That's what we were doing. Yeah, I mean that's exactly what we we're doing, right? Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of reading, like I did last year from a book, and I'm also going to talk about a couple things. One thing I want to talk about is the movie Mandy. This movie came out this year in 2018. This movie's fucking incredible. Um, one of the most interesting tidbits that I heard was that you know uh, Nicholas Cage to a certain you know subset of, of individuals in the human race has become kind of a meme or funny or people think he but something that I heard was that with Nicolas Cage the main director said you know they would, he would give you like three different versions he'd give you like over the top he'd give you subdued he'd give you kind of like like medium and it was up to the, the, the director the uh, editor to pick the performances but everyone was just picking the fucking wild performance so it's like you know he gets his reputation as a fucking a fucking nutbag. I mean, he probably is. I mean, he's sh- sh- certainly not. But like, he has range. You know what I mean? Um, anyway, it, it, the movie is just unfathomably good. Like someone like me who's uh, into a lot of retro things, not because they're old. It's just, I don't know. There's just something about things from certain eras. Because I always think about this. I was like, you know, I was thinking about today the music I like. Um. It is almost 100% 20th century. A lot of the art that I like is really from the 20th century. I like some 19th century art. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm not talking about paintings. I'm talking about like when I say art, I mean the totality. I mean like, like uh, totality of of a like, human expression, like art. Uh, you know, paintings, uh, film, writing. Um, you know, music, uh, theater. Um, even in food in ways, but like uh, any way that you express yourself, any way that a human being expresses themselves, is what I'm talking about here. But um, I mean, yeah, it's uh, I literally forgot what I was talking about. I'm I'm lit up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just I'm just fucking cruising right into this new year. That's what I'm doing. I'm cruising right into this new year. But I'm going to play a little bit more music, and then I'm going to talk about a writer that I discovered. Much like I, did, it's, much like I discussed Scott Sama uh, last year, literally last year at this time. And uh, also, I'm going to be uh, talking about, uh, or reading from a uh, novel. But right now, we're going to have a, a little bit more music. Shoot your raids from Sega still on in the background, by the way. Let me prove I'm always here, I'll make sure it's too much noise 
never gets in.
the moon when the stars align The red man Aries from the fire arise Bitterly with the war gods Spawn the planet red The later lambs Forging ahead when the equinox comes He emerges again The night is long as day Under his reign Merciless warrior I did a lot of things in 2018. You know what I did? I made a movie in 2018 on a broken computer. Uh, maybe not a broken computer, but a computer that's pretty old. I mean, like I bought this computer. I'm using it right now. 2010? I'm still using it. 2011, maybe. I'm still using it. It's still working. It's gonna get upgraded this year. I made a movie with that, with the camera I bought rather cheaply. I shot it like an editor, based it on something I had made. It's called Head Heavy. Got over a hundred views on YouTube. It may not seem like a lot, but for me, this is something that I made in my house. It's another thing I did in 2018. I got my own apartment. I got my own apartment. Out of order HQ, it's been ever since. There's dark times, you know, there's bright times. I got a promotion. I got a promotion. I, I never got a college degree, but I somehow was able to get a promotion. Move from one facet of work to another. I did that myself. With no degree, just working my way. It's possible. But things were things I didn't do that I wanted to do. I wanted to write a novel. I haven't done it yet. I wanted to make a complete film. I haven't done it yet. But I made a couple good short films. But still, I haven't got more to do. I got more to do at work. I got more to do with my music. I got to spend more time with my son. I had Christmas with my son. I had Thanksgiving with my son. I had my own versions of it. This is me living away from him for the first time. It's been less than a year, but I don't see him every week. I don't see him all the time. He's still my boy, but this, this, this is a lot. This is all that's happened in 2018. I went to California in February. I had an amazing time out there. It was a life-changing experience. I did a lot in 2018. But there's two things I have to promise to do. I'll close out with reading from the book, but I want to tell you a little bit about this writer, Hob Brown. I discovered him from a website, a t- it was a Tumblr, if anyone remembers Tumblr, I don't know if they're still using it. It's called Writers No One Reads, but I discovered his name is, his name is Hob Brown, not from the place, Brun, Hob Brun maybe? H-O-B-B-R-O-U-N, you figure it out. I'll use your little, little word on Hob Brun. Pa Broom was the son of Jane and Haywood Hale Broom and grandson of Haywood Broom, the newspaper columnist. He spent his early youth in New York City and in Woodstock, New York, and attended the Dalton School, the Riverdale School, and Reed College. In 1983, Hob Broom was living in Portland, Oregon. He had published his first novel, Auditorium, and had just begun work on his second novel, Inner Tube, when he was made to undergo surgery on his spine. The surgery saved Hob Broon's life. It also left him helplessly, hopelessly paralyzed from the neck down and permanently dependent on a respirator. In due course, Hob Broon again took up work on Inner Tube using a 
sip and puff device to activate the keyboard of a Franklin Ace 2000 computer. It was by this method that Ha Boone could put work on inner tube. Compose the short fiction that constitutes the volume of stories down in your hands, and we begin work on it. They agreed to meet at the Needle Rocks on the first day of May, and swore a pact of blood to die free. Buzz had tears in his eyes, Midnight had to be clubbed to stop his raving, and then tried to his pinto. They took off just at dusk and followed the feeder crack up across the creek, up across the bridge. Further on, they found a cave dug out of the red rock that would conceal their fire. They made camp and Buzz and Molly lit to a mother who should have put coffee on the black horse and did. Buzz said, But for the greaser punk, we wouldn't be asquat down in mud with fried biscuit for dinner. Midnight said, We gone soft? They laid themselves down, but nobody slept. There was bat stink in the cave and a cold seep that had been all fucked up in the blankets. See, I love the human images, and I hated the way people degraded it, over developing some bits to gain temporary advantage and breaking others off to get relief from very ordinary pain. I seem surrounded by leeches, using the vitality to steal vitality from others, and by stuff and by sponges, hiding behind too many mouths and by crustaceans, swapping their feelings for armor. I saw that a decent human life. She could take discipline and exertion and adventure and be unselfish. So I joined the army. Can you tell me what other organization I could have joined? And in spite of five dangerous missions behind enemy lines, and in spite of watching the Q39 program, I grew to be nine feet tall and I was blue as glass. I could exert fantastic pressure vertically, upward and downward, but the slightest sideways blow would have cracked me open. We do crack, you know, in the army. Next day, I went to school all day and got back two F's on a geography quiz and a vocabulary test. And after school, Jerry was on the front porch smoking a cigarette, taking a break from work, and said, No more fish for a while. And I said, Why not? And he said, The old snapper ain't selling worth shit in the restaurant. I said, Why not try some other kind? And he said, A couple of days, maybe. And then he said, Look, Coke, I got some manicotti noodles. Some people in town want to deliver for him for a couple of days. I said, sure. So 
We went to the kitchen, he gave me these three white boxes and bags and said they'll each give you an envelope with bread in them. Just That's all. I checked one of the boxes out behind a tree at that end of the block and saw inside it was Coke, not manicotti noodles. But I delivered them anyway and didn't take any because I figured people would complain and I get caught. I delivered them to people I'd seen eating at the restaurant and they gave me an envelope just like Jerry said without even asking. I bought a girl chew and came back to the house and Jerry and me were joined on the sun deck before dinner and began. Mom was there talking to his to this new guest who was the writer she liked and she laughed at everything he said and how they noticed me or Jerry. It's one of the novelization of Crisscross. Got some.